There's a whole ton of reasons why you want to get behind a Jordan 1, but this one takes it to another level. And I've been here before uh, with these guys. These are the Fly Ease. And I've done a, pr a few videos about Fly Ease shoes, but in particular, there was a, a really early Jordan 1 release from the Fly Ease line. And we talk in great detail in that video about the history, where it came from. And we're only going to brush over those things today and actually get into the shoe a lot more quickly because, uh, like I said, I've already done it in that, that video. I've already talked about things like... T Hatfield designed these shoes, but no, not Tinker Hatfield, his brother Toby Hatfield. And it's uh, it's been a while now that he's been working, I think maybe since 2004, um, that he's been working on the Fly Ease line. And it's all about making shoes accept can't speak, accessible to people who might not be able to get their feet into the standard runner shoes. These are obviously Jordan 1 highs, but they've got a couple of tricks up their sleeves to make them accessible to people uh, and what I was thinking I was trying to think about the kinds of people who would struggle to get their feet into shoes and basically there's two ways to break that down one is that there's problems with your feet making it difficult to get your feet into the shoes or two there's problems with some other part of your body like your hands or your arms or your back or stuff making it difficult to get down there and actually get the traction to get your foot into a shoe and it turns out it was a guy with cerebral palsy who inspired uh, this line and Toby Hatfield to go after um, something to make them more guess, accessible and uh, and this is a kid who was born two months premature um, and uh, basically had overcome a lot of physical challenges but still had a lot of trouble uh, with his hands and found it very difficult to tie laces so he sort of inspired the fly ease line um, and the, today what we're looking at is a black and white Jordan 1 uh, fly ease but they do a really terrible job like a really terrible job with the promotional materials showing you why they're fly and what it is about them they just tend to churn out the same kind of Jordan 1 promotional materials and it just looks like a you know a standard Jordan 1 they don't really give you the, the details that you're looking for to understand the construction of the shoe but I do I do that and I'm going to do it right now and we'll do there's basically two things we're talking about and it's all about making the ankle a little bit more accessible and also about making the laces a little bit more accessible so we'll start with the laces right here and what you're looking at is that the laces that run down the front of the shoe just like any Air Jordan 1 actually have a velcro sort of underlay on there and you can sort of remove the entire lace section and then get your foot into these guys and then velcro it all back down so any of that time and fumbling over laces uh, trying to get you know the, your foot into the shoe because of the lace area it's all removed because the entire panel can be just velcroed open uh, to let your foot slip in there and I was thinking about who would need help getting their foot into shoes and I was thinking like military vets maybe injured in the field or people uh, Paralympians you know people who are born with disabilities uh, and struggle to, to get their foot in the shoe or people who have survived a car crash or people uh, who have over Overcome physical difficulties and can't, uh, you know, get their hands or their legs or feet to work. And I think this is a really big thing from the Nike and the Jordan lines and from the Hatfield brothers uh, to put some effort into uh, making shoes accessible to a wider range of people. I think that's a, a big plus in the world today. So it's a very nice. Uh, nice shoe nice idea and those laces are the big sort of story in the front half of the shoe. Uh, but the big story in the back half of the shoe is all about deconstructing the ankle. And again, these black and whites we're looking at today, you don't get much information on them, so I have to go back to a black and red pair. Um, and this pair, you can really see that ankle fully opened. And basically, there's two things on the ankle that really support this fly ease accessibility idea. And one is that there's an ankle strap up there, velcroed on in the same way that many ankle straps would be velcroed on uh, to, to shoes. But then two, there's also uh, a fastener, a zip that runs around um, almost the entire 360 degree circumference of the ankle and then you can pull that sort of flap uh, the ankle flap open to give you accessibility and then undo that zip zipper and it totally deconstructs the entire ankle area slip your foot in and then just zip up and velcro up and bang you've got yourself into a pair of Jordan 1 highs and not very easy to do if your uh, fingers aren't working very well for example or if you've got some kind of disability that makes it difficult to bend down so they're the two main main focuses on the fly ease side of this and what the construction and the physical element of that fly ease looks like um, but like I said it's these uh, black and whites that they're not showing us those details today so I had to go into the vault and I think it was uh, a blue and black pair to show the laces and a red 
red and black pair to show the uh, the ankle and stuff like that so all that being said let's park that and get into the actual shoe itself and talk about some of the detailing on there and since we've been up at the ankle strap already we might as well go back there and have a look at the wings logo which is always on an air jordan one high and the air jordan one mid actually on the ankle side of things uh, but usually those ankle straps sort of uh, they come from the back of the shoe and taper to the front but you can see in this picture here that it actually comes from the front of the shoe and tapers to the back because it would release around the front of the shoe with that velvet Velcro on there but it's a great way to put the wings logo onto this shoe and it, it looks like a standard Air Jordan 1 because of the way that they've managed to sort of incorporate the design of the actual shoe into the functionality of the fly ease uh, and this is a great example of that the black wings logo on the grey and white uh, ankle sort of strap up there so it's a good place to start uh, with the Jordan 1 design side of things rather than the fly ease uh, side of things uh, then we're going to come down to the Mid foot area on these shoes and you can see that white swoosh on there but what really interested me was that there's a kind of um, it's, I don't know it's like a playoff and opposition to a recent Air Jordan one that we did which was the electrical electrical the electro oranges dropping here in Japan in a few days time a shoe that I'm very very interested in uh, and a big story on that shoe was that the mid foot area the mid foot panel was white and the heel was white which is unusual in Air Jordan ones not not impossible not never I'm just saying it's unusual um, and uh, so the midfoot panel having white and the heel having white on there uh, was the kind of story of that shoe and of course the orange and stuff like that uh, but the interesting sort of uh, opposition with this shoe is the black toe and the black midfoot panel and again it's not very common at uh, the Air Jordan 1 line it's, it's done sometimes but the fact that the, the, the toe is in black and then the midfoot panel is also in black usually it'd be one of those two would be in the white uh, to, to offset the other one so that's kind of a major design element on these shoes uh, in terms of looking at the color placement the construction the materials and things like that uh, and then uh, I suppose we go up from there onto the tongue uh, because it's nice to look at these tongues uh, because they do retain that um, kind of uh, Jordan shout out with a, a, a jump man up there instead of having Nike Air it has a jump man up there I think it's a white jump man on a black branding panel on a black tongue that kind of completes the the detailing up high there and then if you go back from that a little bit you get to look on the inside and see that they say fly ease on the insole instead of a, a jump man or nike air on the inside of them so the fly ease is very predominant up there so there are sort of those shout outs to the nike line the jordan line but there's also the shout outs uh, to the fly ease line having the unique stuff that's different uh, from the regular jordan one line uh, and then the final thing that i think is probably go over and have a look at the insole not the outside insole the outsole on these guys uh, all in black front to back on this shoe uh, to give you that black and white feel so uh, uh, so the total kind of look at the shoe you've looked at the details there if you look at the shoe it's a one -er, um, and like I said the main sort of design point to look at would be that black toe and the black midfoot panel and hopefully the full size picture here has given you a sense of what I'm talking about in there but then you really have to dig deep and look for those fly ease accessibility design points that are hidden away very very neatly in the shoe and the velcro on those laces and also in the fastener and the ankle strap around the ankle of these guys because they are really lost in the shoe they're so well hidden uh, that they still retain a Jordan 1 feel and that's the point and um, there was an Air Max 90 as well that I uh, had a special feature where the back was entirely collapsible and you could fit your foot in and then the back would spring back up and secure uh, your ankle and give you that support on there um, and the whole idea about this is that the, the shoe retains its unique identity for what it is those Air Max 90s looked like Air Max 90s and these Jordan 1 highs look like Jordan 1 highs even though they've got these special design elements that make them accessible uh, to a wider range of people so I think it's a very good thing I think it's a big plus when a shoe like this comes around even though it's maybe not the kind of big talking point for the season I still want to do it and support this kind of effort because it's great to see you know multi-billion dollar companies going uh, after a very small and limited section of their clientele but taking it uh, you know making sneakers accessible to a wider range of people is a big plus as far as I'm good concerned so thank you Toby Hatfield thank you Jordan Line thank you Nike it's a great um, step forward if you ask me so step forward pun intended and um, with that being said it's time to wrap this one up but uh, I don't think I mentioned the drop date and I've forgotten what it is um, July I want to say the 22nd but I might be wrong on that because today 
is the 13th of the 13th today. Uh, it might be July the 22nd, but definitely in the next few um, days, like 10 days or so, it's the guys over at Soul Supplier in the UK, again, who have given us that drop date. They give us a lot of drop dates ahead of anybody else. So Soul Supplier guys, thank you very much. And I think it's definitely, you know, before the end of July, I think the 22nd, but I might be wrong on that. So, uh, uh, but with that being said, it's time to wrap this one up and just uh, do the same thing that I do at the end of every single video, uh, which is tell you guys, you know, remember, I do this every single day and because of that that means that you are guaranteed to see me tomorrow